I'm digging this. I'll be doing more. Okay. So here is a typical day in the garden. I have all kinds of greens here. My grandsons were out and they were weed eating and doing all things, so I didn't, I didn't um, film it. But we've got lots and lots of Swiss chard. I've got some broccoli or some cauliflower leaves. Um, some. Uh, purple and white. Uh, yeah, kohlrabi, kohlrabi, and um, kale. So those are the four kinds of greens I have in here. I'm going to give them a good wash and drain. I'm going to spread them out on a bath towel, roll that towel up really tight, um, and get all the excess water out. I'm going to destem them bag them up and put them in the freezer and then um, later today or this evening I plan on turning the freeze dryer on. Uh, I've got a bunch of greens and a bunch of herbs all bagged up and frozen. Everything that goes in the freeze dryer either has to not be frozen or must be frozen. If you mix them, it's like if I were to put these in with the frozen ones, it would not freeze dry them. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. And then there's my Giganto um, Tromboncino or Repicante squash, whichever you want to call it. My small onion harvest. Um, sadly, <laughs> it didn't. We didn't get much. This is this. I've already gotten that much, and I have at least that much more to go. But they did not get very big, and I've never had them get very big. So that's something I need to work on learning how to do. Partially, I think, because I've never started them with local starts or with starts or seeds or anything that I have grown. So um, I think if I were to grow some, take the seed from them and replant them next year, so I did not let these go to seed, then um, they would be acclimated to, to here and would get bigger. And then a little over a quart of green beans and a couple of little cherry tomatoes. So that's it. Oh, and I forgot. Let me show you a bowl of cukes, and they need more water in them. So about half that bowl came from today, so I'm going to need to make some relish and some pickles, and uh, I think I'm going to take part of that uh, tromboncino squash and some um, cucumbers and onion and make a vinegar um, veggie salad out of it. Uh, I'm going to trim off all and clean up those onions and hang them in the garage and I'm just going to bag up those green beans and um, put them in the fridge until I have enough to run a canner load. So that's what I'm doing from the garden today in the kitchen today. I may take you along for some of it but I just wanted to keep you updated. Okay, so the other day I made a jar of fermented pickles and um, as I told you, I don't really like a lot. I like some fermented things, but there are other fermented things that I'm not awfully crazy about. I tried fermenting pickles and I didn't do it for very long. They came out really squishy and watery. They crunched, but they were just full of water, but I didn't leave them very long. So um, I left these 10 days. Actually, today is day 11. So um, I'm going to open them up. And I showed you these new lids that I got. So I just push on it and let the, the air out. It has created a vacuum. <coughs> there we go. I use these, these uh, silicone things. It was like a really cheap silicone mat from Walmart, Walmart brand, I think. And I, I cut it up to line my, bought several of them. They were like three something for, I don't know, 
two or three mats, big mats. And I cut them up to line my freeze dryer trays because I was too cheap to spend like 20 bucks a piece for them like they want on Harvest, right? They're nice thick ones. I mean, they're really good ones, but nothing like this. But what I did with the wasted scraps works perfect. So anyway, here we go. Now I have one that I tried a few days in because I was afraid that um, they were going to get too fermented and they weren't fermented enough. So here it is. I already took some uh, a piece off. Holy heck, that's pretty good. They really don't taste real fermenty. They just taste very dill. Yeah. I'll be fermenting more today. As a matter of fact. These are good. I'm surprised. They don't taste, have that real fermented taste. I mean, there's a little bit of it there, but it's more just crunchy dill pickle. And it's very crunchy. Mm-hmm. Hope you could hear that. I'm digging this. I'll be doing more. Okay. So let's speed this up and listen to some tunes. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know if I let figure out where the road goes. Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Okay, friends, we are going to uh, make some fermented dill pickles. And you always want to start with very clean, very clean jars. Ugh, and I have a fly. Flies make me crazy. I've been in and out of the garage I just, until I got ready to sit down and do this. 
Um, I didn't see any. I know flies are the bane of homesteaders. They, you can't have a homestead and not have flies. It just is what it is. And I have 10 baby chicks and three baby ducklings in my um, garage, which is connected to my house. And so in and out, in and out, flies. I mean, there's nothing to be done about it. This is the same day, by the way. I did change shirts because I have been messing with ducklings and with um, baby chicks. I got one baby chick that I'm not sure might not, you know, be real sturdy. So I have been doctoring it, trying to snap it out of its lethargy. And um, hopefully it seems a little better. But I, I had to hold it up against my chest and put, use a dropper and try to get some stuff in its little beak. And so I want to make sure everything is very sanitary for making ferments. Ferments, um, you know, use bacteria. And if you introduce bad bacteria with the good bacteria, you're going to get mold in a nasty ferment. So everything here is clean, sanitized. I've been cleaned and sanitized. So... I'm gonna make some pickles. I have a big bowl of cukes here, and I need a knife. I just finished, or I just tried some uh, pickles, which I showed you, that I really liked them, and I took them over to my grandsons. I have a 15-year-old grandson who is a pickle freak, and then a 10 year old who likes them. And the pickle freak said, oh wow, these are delicious. These are really good, better than your other ones. So these are fermented versus the either canned or refrigerator pickles, which he really likes, but he likes these better. I think I agree. Um, and so my youngest, the 10 year old, took a big bite out of one and went, oh, gua. That's what they call me. That's my grandma name, gua. Um, oh, gua, these are delicious. These are, these are like real pickles. You know, like the kind you get at Walmart or something. <laughs> so I guess they're a hit. So anyway, I have got a bunch of cucumbers that I need to do something with. And I tried a couple of pickles not taking the blossom end off and a couple of pickles and the rest taking it off and it seems like the one where I just nipped the blossom end off seemed to be a little crisper. So that's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is struggle with this jar. Ah, there we go. And what am I missing? I'm missing something. I remember. I still feel like I'm missing something. Mm, yeah. I am missing bay leaves. Now you can use bay leaves. You can use... Um, if I can find them here. There they are. You can use bay leaves. You can use tea bags. You could use um, black tea if you have tea leaves. Um, what else can you use? Oak leaves, like trees, oak leaves. Um, anything with tannins in it. And that will do the same thing as pickle crisp does when you're pickling. So I am going to put one at the bottom. Oh, that fly. You know, I watch homesteaders and I feel like, you know, sometimes they just totally disregard the flies that are like buzzing all around the food that they're cooking. And, and I'm like, I, I just could never become so um, immune to them that I wouldn't have to apologize or acknowledge them. So I'm acknowledging them. They're friggin' disgusting. All right, so I put a couple of cloves of garlic, which by the way, this is how I, I save my garlic. These are peeled cloves in white vinegar. They'll last for a couple of years like that easily. 
And then I just took a Korean chili flakes. You could use red pepper, cayenne, or you could leave it out. And then I am going to put, oh, they're all gnarled together. I'm gonna put a head of dried, now I, I just picked most of my um, dill and uh, freeze dried it. So I have freeze dried heads of dill here. And I am also going to put, and this is all frozen, I'm getting ready to freeze dry it, but I've got some dill weed that I'm just going to put in there. And I still forgot my measuring. No, I didn't. They're here. I'm sitting down. It's kind of uncomfortable to me, but I'm sitting down so that I can see the camera, you can see me. Um, a half a teaspoon. Actually, I think I did a whole teaspoon last time. So a whole teaspoon of yellow mustard seeds. And eh, several peppercorns. There's probably, that's probably a bit too many, maybe a dozen peppercorns. All right, now I'm going to start packing down, packing these pickles. And I took the blossom end off. And I am going to continue to do that. Because I did, I do think that I saw a difference in, or tasted a difference in the crispness. And then I'm just going to cram as many in there as I possibly can. Let's put this one in the other way. Oop, take that blossom end off. bunch of big ones up on top but I know I got a bunch of little ones in there somewhere. I'm going to take this one out. And, and the reason they say to take the blossom end off is something about the enzymes in the that end of the blossom or where the blossom was that um, prevents them from staying crisp. So I'm just going to take their word for that's why. And I'm going to add some more dill down in here. Just however much you want. I am going to do a couple more. Now I will say these have been here since... Uh, these have been in here for a year. They are starting to get soft. There's nothing wrong with them, but they aren't crispy um, garlic. Oh, the flies. Ugh. Okay. And I'm going to put in a couple of more bay leaves along the sides there. And I am going to put just a splash of vinegar. I'm going to put my salt. Now you don't want to use iodized salt. You want to use something natural like pink Himalayan or um, kosher or even pickling salt will do. And I'm going to put a heaping teaspoon of salt in there. I'm just going to fill the rest of it up with um, uh, filtered water. You, can, you don't want to use tap water unless it's filtered because anything with chlorine in it will stop the ferment. And that's all there is to it. And then I'll, I'll let me do this and then I'll show you.
All right, so I have, I can already tell, filled that a little too full. Now, I have a glass ferment weight that I'm going to put in there and push down because I want to make sure that everything stays below the brine. And I am, I'm going to put this on first because I really should have mixed everything up, which I did not do in a jar or something, or at least the, wa the brine, the water and the, and the salt. But that's okay. Now we've got it. I'm going to put this weight in here because you want, you want everything below the water. You do not want um, anything up above that could, uh, up above the water line that could um, spoil and mold. So I got these, I showed you once before, but I got these fermentation lids and I really, really like them better than anything I've used so far. And so I'm gonna actually buy another set for myself and maybe a set for my sister. I'll put a link below for that. And make sure there's nothing on the edge there. Then I'm gonna, well, maybe I'm going to, put this on. Why is it not going on? Well, it's not going on because that's too hot. So let's push these babies down a little bit more. There, that's good. We'll try. Ta-da! That's all it took. It's pretty easy. Put that on good and tight. And then it comes with this little pump that pulls the air out. So you just, okay, I don't know if you, can you see that? Let's see if you can see that. All right, so watch, you see the air bubbles come up. Can you see that? See? They're coming up right here. One more time. Yep, and just a little bit of liquid came to the top. So I know that all of the air is out of there. So there's nothing now that's going to be able to mold or be nasty. So, you know what? I'm going to do that one more time. Just because it's fun. Okay. I'm happy with that. So now, I'm going to continue on. I don't know whether I'm going to get two or three jars, but here we go. times before can't take this anymore cuz I've been looking for something to change thoughts into motion been waiting way too long oh, yeah waiting just for somebody to love and to surround me and to handle my emotions I was out waiting for something if I close my eyes, it's all been a waste of time I was out driving every mile And now if I've been one, it's all been a waste of time It's all been a waste of time How could somebody be with someone else 
thought about supper yet it's been a busy day with ducks and chickens and cleaning out cages and pickles and just harvesting and all the things so um yeah 5:30. i'm like i'm hungry i have no idea what's for supper so i'm just going to throw together a really quick stir fry from things i have in the fridge things i brought in from the garden and um uh things i just have on hand so here we go Throw a little ghee in here. This is my homemade ghee, and I do have a video on how to do this really simply in the oven. So I chopped little mini bell pepper, or yeah, sweet peppers. I chopped that. Uh, uh, ripicante squash some of that I really only just used a little piece of it there's a huge amount and then I chopped up some of the onions that I picked from the garden this morning So I always have, or almost always have, some ground beef and turkey or whatever ground um, cooked up with onions and peppers and seasoning in it, just that I can use in almost anything. This actually is ground venison. And it just comes in handy to always have something like that so that when you have a knife that you just want to throw something together really quickly. You got it. I have a bag of tricolor coleslaw that I get at Walmart. And it's got red cabbage, green cabbage, and carrots. I've got a little fried rice seasoning that I really like the taste of. I'm going to throw that in here. I 
I have some freeze-dried mushrooms. And I'm just going to kind of crunch up in here. I like them in smaller pieces. They have a really good flavor, really strong flavor. But I don't like the big pieces. I just don't like the texture of the big pieces. I'm going to throw some Goya adobo, which is kind of an all-purpose seasoning, but you got to be careful with it because it's a little salty. I'm also going to throw Celine's house seasoning in there, which I've told you a hundred times what it is, so I won't bore you with it again. If you don't know what it is, uh, just ask me in the comments and I'll tell you. Alright, so things are starting to soften up a little bit. I've got some egg rolls from Sam's that I'm going to nuke and then I can't, can't get to my air fryer because my canner's in front of it. But um, I'll probably just put a little oil on the stove and, and crisp them up that way. I'm going to put some Korean red pepper flakes. I really like these. They are, I think I might have just overdone it. My husband's not going to like that, so I'm going to take some of that out. Anyway, these red pepper flakes are spicy, but they're not hot, hot. They're um, more of a mild. I won't say sweet because I don't think they are, although that's how I, I heard them described. But they are a little more smoky and a little less hot. Mm. That's good already. Darn. I'm going to put some reduced sodium soy sauce. And I'm going to throw a little hoisin sauce in here. Not a whole lot. That's probably only a quarter of a cup at the most. I tilt my pan like this because I am forever dumping food over the side if I don't. Alright, let's see where we're at here. And yes, I double dipped, but it's just me and Bill. That's good. Put a little pan down there with just a smidge of avocado oil in it. Because I don't want them oily, but I do want them crisp. Here are my pickles. I ended up with a half a gallon one with the great big cucumbers. I sliced a big couple of big cucumbers and made slices. I don't know how those are going to turn out. I'm sure, they'll taste fine, but I don't know if they'll be crunchy or not. And then I had two quarts of uh, the smaller cukes.
that's it. I started, where am I? <laughs> Got that light behind me. I started dinner at 5.35. Actually, I take that back. I started at 5.25 because I chopped things up. And um, then I threw it all together. It is um, 5.40. So this has taken me all total 25 minutes to get everything from the absolute start to finish and to put on a plate for my husband and myself. But let's take a look at it. Really looks beautiful. Turn my egg roll off there. There we go. Doesn't that look yummy? Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'm tuckered. After I get to eat and get the kitchen cleaned up, I am probably going to do some editing. Sit in my recliner, put my feet up, and do some editing. So, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I thoroughly enjoy taking you along. It's the editing I don't enjoy. Uh, but I, I love the filming part. So, anyway, um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you are, is that a, th do you get a thumbs up? You don't really. Give it a like. Um, share it if you enjoyed this and um, subscribe, please. But something that'll help me more than anything, I'm burning my egg roll, is, um, is to, to leave me a comment. Because I'm really trying to grow my channel and that's what helps do it and I appreciate it. Guys, I love being with you and thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate you. Mwah!